Alrighty, what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the weekly update all right so i'm going to start off here with the weekly charts then we're going to go over the daily charts and then we'll check out the 30 minute time frame i'm going to make this one pretty simple for us um i'm going to start off by pointing out we do have a bullish engulfing candlestick on every single indice here so we have one on dia on iwm on qqq on spy they're all there and three out of four of those do have the increasing volume to support that candlestick formation so uh, i'm just going to say this doesn't look bearish to me now i'm just going to point out right here on spy you did peek your head over this high over there which does tell me there is still demand for this thing, which also does show us that this was just a higher low that got put in. But let's stick on the weekly time frame for now. Obviously, you, you have the increasing buy volume here. You have the bullish engulfing candlestick. And now you don't really have any resistance all the way up into right here. Let me just put a zone on the chart right there so we could be watching that all the way up to 453.51 and this is on the weekly time frame you do have this wick up here but that is something that we only can really see on the daily time frame um so you know you can't expect sellers to step in here but if we're just focusing solely on the weekly chart here you're going to be looking at this supply zone up here which goes from 453 all the way up to just about 462 so that is what i have my eyes on Obviously, we do have this line up here at 448. That was the rising wedge upward breakout target from a while back. I, I think it was probably we broke out somewhere over here. Um, and that's why we just had to be open to it. And now we see why we had to be open to it. We are slowly inching our way up here. And if you do see a daily close over this 443.90 level, then I do believe the race is on to all the way up here. Let me just like that, just like that. Um, but yeah, if you get a daily close over 443.90, then I do think that we are probably going to hit that price target and then probably find our next point of resistance up here at 448.50 all the way up to 450. But like I said, if you do end up getting up there, you know, you have on the weekly time frame here, this is where sellers held the line back in March of 2022. So we do get up there, solid chance you get up into this range. That's all I'm getting at. Now, moving on over to QQQ, I am going to point out, yes, you also have that bullish engulfing candlestick right there after the uh, bearish Ferrami candlestick. And this bullish engulfing candlestick actually invalidated that pattern by closing above the, you know, the body of this candle right here. But you also do have the increasing buy volume here. And I want to point out, if you do end up getting a close, even if it is a daily close above this 371.93, I think we're probably going to start moving up to the next resistance. And I understand how crazy that sounds. I get it. All right, I get it. Let me just put on the Fibonacci retracement from the all-time high to the low of this year. And I want to point out, hey, 0.786 Fibonacci. If you end up getting above there, then yeah, I think you probably are going to be pushing up to this $400 level. Uh, 400 to 405, that would be where this supply zone would be had. And that is derived from the weekly time frame right there. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm simply just pointing out what I'm seeing on the chart. And I'm sure none of us thought this would be taking place. Uh, or at least, you know, the majority of us probably thought this price action on SPY and QQ was not going to be attainable. But guess what, guys? It has been attainable. You're doing crazy things. And the fact that we came down here, bounced off of the August 2022 high demand zone, and bounced all the way back up to put in a higher high, validates this is your higher low. So the, the trend is still bullish. And that is what Friday did for us. Uh, we did know we had... Uh, some structure to be watching here, some bullish structure that we had. I'm just going to quickly point that out, which was an inverse head and shoulders bottom going on. And then we also had this bull flag formation going on there. And then you back tested it. All right. Well, you didn't back test the bull flag. What you did back test is just try and find it. I know I had supply. I had a uh, demand zone somewhere. Maybe it was just this. I don't know. Uh, regardless, you broke out of this resistance here, and then you were off to the races. Oh, maybe it was just we had going. Oh, right there. All right, that's picture perfect, right? Uh, you literally broke above it. Let me just delete that arrow so we can just fall price action for a little bit here. 
broke out of your continuation pattern in the form of a bull flag, came back to backtest your supply zone. Now it is a demand zone once you ended up doing that. And then you went off to the races. And I was saying, hey, we're looking for a gap up over here, or you're looking to come back down here and, you know, test that again. Obviously, we got a back up, uh, a, a gap up, and it was filthy. And you just kept going. And you ended up peeking your head up above this previous high, which, again, that validates this as your, you know, your macro trend here. That's your higher low. And it was also done off of increasing volume. Now I am going to, let me just quickly take off everything. Where are my arrows? There are my arrows. All right, let's just quickly get rid of all of the stuff we just put on the chart. So we have a nice and clean chart. And I do want to point one thing out. I do want to say, I don't think this is fake price action that we're seeing. I don't think this is a fake run. And why? Because you have increasing volume on every single Every single major advance is done off of increasing volume. All right, you had the same thing right here when you literally broke out of, let me just put a thing right here on it. When you broke out of this top of the range here, I, I know everyone remembers this range. It was definitely a frustrating thing, but we just, you know, kept training back and forth in it. But once you finally broke up, it was a decisive move. Guess what? It was done off of that increasing volume. While you were the day pushing into it, increasing volume. The day when you broke out of it, increasing volume. You came back into it, came above it, you back tested it. All right. You back tested it off of, again, increasing volume. And then again, you made this advance over that high. What is it? Off of increasing buy volume. Um, and then you come down here. All right. You see these. Uh, Increasing volume candlesticks. Well, that was these three candlesticks right here. And yeah, you topped and you sold from here. But again, you were being shown that volume is backing that move and you came back. Now, I was personally looking for buyers to step in here and I didn't know if we were going to come back and break that, but I was completely open to it. And I did think we would at least get a dead cat bounce here for a lower high, which, you know, we got that and blew it out of the water considering that was the higher low and that's what friday ended up confirming for us all right so um where to go from here where to go from here so you are getting rejection right off the bat from here so you could come back down for a retest of this level right here 441 11 and then you could be off the races now we're gonna have to see what happens here but i would assume with what we just saw on friday that we're probably going to bust through that and step on up to 448.50 all the way to 450 and that would be your next major resistance. Or we would be coming back, which I, I think this is likely. All right, I just want to put that out there. I do think it is likely, but you could also be coming up here without stopping. I'm not saying you can't do that. Um, but I, I do want to point out, you do have this gap here. And I did put a zone from this previous gap over here. So we have a new demand zone down here. Could be doing something like that. Maybe you come up for a double top or maybe you come up and just you know get up there you want to see a daily close above that high though at 443.90 to uh pretty much validify. is that is that a word validify that that's the word validify this move that's taking place here and you know that would tell us we're probably going to this next level over here on qqq what will i be watching for i will be watching for a retest of this either this so let me just put this on my chart, all right? Either we're going to retest 367 demand and come on up here, and we're going to have to see the reaction, what happens, like, you know, we don't know what happens there, but we're going to have to see. If, you know, you just bust through it, then yeah, I mean, you're looking at the golden, the top of the golden pocket, the 0.786 FIB up here, around 375, and then above there, guys, you have nothing, all right? I, I know we're on the 30-minute time frame, but... um. You got this little, it's all the way up at 390. So, you know, if you do end up busting up above, you're coming way up there. That's all I want to say here. Let me just drag that out real quick. Drag it all the way over there nice and slowly. There we go. All right. So uh, let's just look. If you do end up busting through this, and again, you're looking for these closes above these levels to uh, bring you to the next levels. And do we typically just go level to level? That's how I've been seeing things. It's definitely how it went on IWM. But yeah, guys, that's another 4% up. So that is a ways away before any resistance. And the next major resistance is going to be all the way up there, which I'm not saying we get up there. But I'm sure it would blow a lot of people out of the water if we do end up getting there. And um, yeah, that's that. 
But yeah, you could either come down to this demand zone down there, or you end up coming all the way down here to this demand zone, which would also be effectively filling this gap at 364.89. And then you could be back off the races. And again, we're just going to have to keep on price action here, seeing, you know, what's going on. Uh, are we going to double top here? I have no idea. Are we going to double top here? I, again, I have absolutely no idea. So if you do end up coming down here, look at that bent arrow right there. If you do end up coming down there, then I'll probably end up putting this on my chart and we're going to have to see how price reacts to this level. If you do end up getting a 30 minute close above there, then yeah, you're very likely heading to test the high again, or at least the supply zone up there. Um, so that is pretty much what I'm going to be watching on SPY and QQ. We can finish things off with IWM. IWM is in the top of its range now. We did literally break into this range, come back for the back test, and then we are right back up there. So just like SPY with the back test of the August 2022 demand zone, you pretty much did the same thing over here. Not the, like, you, you know, not going all the way back over there on IWM, but you pretty much did the same thing. You did a break and retest. And now that you're back at the highs, if you can, you can push above this high here at 189.24, that then does show you that this would just be your higher low. Um, well, regardless, I mean, this is going to be your higher low, but that would show that we are still in a bullish trend here. And then if you do do that, then the next level we are going to be looking for resistance at is going to be all the way up here at, uh, yeah, 192 ish. Uh, and after that, 195, 194.50 is going to be your next major resistance above there. And as we go, guys, I will put these things on the charts for now. We can, you know, keep the chart decently clean here. All right, Mr. Vix, I guess we will close out with that. You did close out the day on Friday with the hammer candlestick. Closed at the high of the day. I'm not saying this thing is going to be, uh, you know, pushing up. We haven't had any... Yeah, Vix hasn't really been useful to us here on this channel, at least. All right, uh, maybe there are other people getting used to out of Vix. Maybe you guys are getting some use out of Vix, but I'm going to be completely honest over here. On my end, I have not really found any reason to keep a close eye on VIX. Obviously, if I see some VIX spikes, that'll be that. Um, on the intraday time frames, I, I have been watching VIX. If I see VIX rising while well, S&P 500 is rising and that happens right into resistance, then I know it's likely going to get at least a little rejection from that resistance. So, like, you should be taking profits. But I'm also going to remind you guys, all right, if you are loading up at these demand zones and selling at supply, then, you know, you should be having a pretty good time. And, like, regardless of what you're seeing on Mr. Vix or not, you should be taking profits for your own sake. You don't want to just... You don't want to get the improper reps in there. You want to, if you want to have longevity in this game, and if you really want to build up the skill set that's going to allow you to really do anything with the market here over the long term, yeah, you need to be putting in those valid reps, not the reps that, oh, sometimes your gamble pays off and you make insane amounts of money. No, you don't want that. You want the consistent money. And if you can't get the consistent money, then you're not going to, it's not going to work out. So that is Jeff, definitely something I'm going to give you guys a reminder of. All right, so I am going to close things off with that. And with that being said, guys, go check out the Twitter if you want to see all of the rest of my stuff over there. I will be, you know, updating you guys over there just with the brief updates after market close each day, as well as like a brief weekly update I gave over there. If you guys do want the long version of the weekly update, you guys can check out the Substack in the link below. And with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.